Hello, in this video I will show you block by block how to build an obsidian reactor and go through the entire process in the new world so you'll be able to see everything that's going on. Uh, but first you'll notice that this looks different than the farm that I showed a couple weeks ago and that's because yesterday while designing a cage for a tree farm I discovered a new way to make wither cages which makes them even easier to build and makes the item collection a lot easier as well. Uh, basically I figured out how to get rid of the boat entirely and have the wither keep himself in place just with pathfinding. Uh, because again, lanterns are slightly smaller than a full block and we can take advantage of that. So quick, let me just run down all of the changes that are on this farm uh, and then we'll get right into the tutorial. And here's a timestamp if you want to just see how it's built. So I've compacted the cobblestone generator up on top. I've added a hopper minecart here to pick up drops that fall down with the player. Snow storage is much more compact and needs less to fill up uh, than the other version did. Item collection is flooded, which means that you don't need to worry about putting any hopper minecarts in anymore. This is possible because the wither is now held in place by these lanterns and his own pathfinding, which tries to get to that golem, as well as this bubble golem here, which will push him up. There are pistons pushing obsidian that lands at this edge here, so we can also collect those. The iron golem is completely enclosed here, so that like a drowned, the trident can't see him and attack him. Uh, also, the water is much closer to the wither. Uh, the, the last one, there's a full block here with signs and then only water here. And this just basically makes the skulls more, uh, or stay higher so that way they're further away from the goal, even though they're both reliable. Uh, I put this portal on the other side so it's in the same chunk as well as the withers and where the portal spawns. Uh, this doesn't really matter, but it looks more compact from the outside. Also, I added a roof over it, um, although you could design your own in a different way if you wanted. So let's get right into the build, and basically I'm going to go from generating this world to creating this, which this terrain is actually really nice. Anyway, let's go. So here's what you'll need to build the nether side, uh, and these planks are for a boat. Uh, and you also need some chicken eggs or to catch a zombie pigment or something. Here is what you'll need for the main reactor, so the overworld side, uh, including what you need for all the mobs, so like pumpkins, you need three of them. You need some iron for minecarts and golems and also some snow. To start out, you need a location which doesn't have many caves or exposed blocks around it, which is why an ocean is best. Uh, but actually a body of water around this big is probably enough. So we can just use this. And you don't want many caves underneath it. If I go into free camera from Tweakaroo, there's a bunch of caves under here. But those aren't actually a huge deal, so we can just go ahead and start. What you need to do is find about the middle of your body of water, or at least around like 20 to 30 blocks away from the land in all directions and just grab those cords so I have mine up in here at the top of the screen uh, and then you want to divide it by 8 so I will do that and then I'll be back so then you're gonna go to the nether and build up another portal in that location hopefully it will come out near where you want to be but in the nether we're gonna find exactly those cords and build a portal there. So it was 2214, which is going to be right here. And let me just use fill to make this a little nicer to work in. Twenty two fourteen is right here. I build up a portal. And uh, since there's still the overworld portal, it'll just link right back to there. Now what we want to do is actually get rid of all of these portals in the overworld so there's no portals in the area, which means you're going to have to build this uh, at least, I think, 500 blocks away from anything else in the overworld uh, that you have already worked on. And basically how we're going to go about doing that is it's easier if you have another player, but if you don't have another player, if you're doing this with single player, 
uh, what you want to do is get yourself some repeaters going like this into a dispenser and we'll just put a bucket of lava in there or waterworks I guess as well and we'll put a button here now what we want to do is go into the nether you can't really do this in survival or in creative so we'll go into the portal and then press this button the lava's in there it'll break it and actually uh, you can test if it's broken by throwing an item in and it'll the portal basically won't do anything to the item so there we know there's no portal there's no portals on the overworld side so we can go back through again and actually if you want to test exactly the location uh, that you'll end up assuming that it's uh, everything's in order put a wall there and edge yourself up against this corner with the wall and you'll notice this is why we don't want caves because you'll spawn in the cave but it's not the end of the world you can just break this portal get yourself some water uh, you could if you're in survival it's good to have just like a stack of ice or something and then just spam it all around down here because the portals can't generate on water. Sorry about that. Uh, no, it's probably really dark on YouTube. Anyway, we want to just put water all over here and then dig back to the surface and try again, basically. So Hit the portal and do your dispenser and the portal is destroyed uh, if it's not destroyed yet throwing an item will load it and that should get it destroyed and now we just want to test again or have we gotten rid of all of the caves so we go through and okay that was silly uh, the portal will generate anywhere that there's four blocks in a row like this so of course on top of the portal itself is a potential location so grab yourself some buttons and cover the top of it and you might even want to put blocks like this over the well this isn't four in a row so you don't have to worry over the repeaters because redstone dust doesn't block the portal generation but repeaters I don't believe do then you can just do this again. And actually, uh, this is exactly what we want. The portal will spawn uh, in the air like this with, uh, it should always be actually Y70, I believe and it has these extra blocks on the outside uh, and this basically means that our portal or our area is prepared how we want it now what we can do is break this portal again and you're going to want to put buttons on top we actually want to make sure that this location is correct so i haven't actually checked i'm going to open chunks and this is actually entirely wrong what you don't what you want is to be on the edge of a chunk, like here. Uh, so we're in the middle, sort of, uh, on the x-axis. But the z-axis, we're in the middle as well, which we don't want. So uh, because the iron golem is going to be here, and the withers are also going to be here, and I think they would be in different chunks. So what you want to do is here... Uh, since this is the z-axis, we're going to move one block further along the z in the nether. So you've gone back to the nether and destroyed the portal in the overworld. Now what we need to do is just go one block in the z direction. Either way should work. 
and build this portal up there. So take that down and put it here. And now if we light this, I believe, yeah, uh, we've generated a new portal here, which is on the chunk border, and that's what you want. So we'll put our buttons back again on top, and uh, basically we can figure out where everything else needs to be built based on this. So the withers are going to be standing, well they're actually not standing on anything anymore, but this block is where their feet would be and their head is blocked by a lantern right there. And there. So this is where withers are, and we can break most of this portal. Uh, not the roof crap. Uh, these blocks here are the ones that the withers will break. So let's just take them out for now, and we can start working on the portal to send the player back through. So what you'll want to do is actually figure out which side you come in from the nether. And for this, you won't actually need to break your portal. You can just see that, uh, well, if you're in survival, if you're in creative, you don't need to still. But um, you can see that I come through here and I'm on this block. So this block is the one that we will put the hole through to fall downwards. Now uh, we can build our other portal. We'll go in the same chunk that this is in, uh, three blocks down like that, and here we'll build this portal. So the bottom of it, if the sea level is the same, which I believe it is everywhere, uh, will be directly in the water, and this is the portal that will go back through to the overworld in to the nether end, sorry. Uh, then we can, since we're falling down here, we'll put a block here that the player is pushed on a water line through, and we just kind of have this snaking shape. Uh, get a stair. There, and this doesn't really need to be a stair, but it needs to be some waterlogged block or a bubble column. Otherwise, fish will spawn in it, which you don't want. And then we can just put water in there. Like that, and it shouldn't flow into the portal if there's a portal lit, or not lit. Uh, next, we can work on getting the actual portal lit. So what we need is a Dispenser there, and a dispenser there like that, and a tripwire here and here, and this will power three blocks in the back here, like so, which will just put redstone dust on them, and that's going to power your dispenser with the flint and steel, which is this one, so we can actually get some of those now. And if you want to input more with a hopper, you'll need to go two hoppers back like this. Next, we also want to do the water. So we put an observer or a piston there with an observer. And when it falls down, so when there's a player in the tripwire here, and when it comes down again, when the player leaves, we want to detect that and break the portal. So we have. Just another observer on a lamp and a block, which is going to be powered and power this. And then we can put a lava 
pour water into here. And it's also important that you put a button on one of these, uh, not this one because it'll break, but any of these three is fine, to stop the portal from generating on these. Uh, and this glass is actually going to be covered up, so it's fine. Let's just make this too tall. And we can put an entrance here with a sign or fence gate. So here is where you would have your platform. So put in your tripwire hook on the overworld side. And then we can actually go through to the nether and test it out. So if we're in survival, go through that lights. And if we leave the tripwire, the lava will break. So let's go to the nether and now what we want to do here is put two blocks like that and break this portal and uh, we'll need a boat in this corner and I suppose I can use glass as well. Uh, actually, I might want to use glass because mobs won't spawn in it. So, put a boat here. And row it into this corner, uh, which is the corner opposite your cover wall. And then what you want to do is get any mob in this boat, because right now if we light this portal, it'll go... So I was actually pretty sure that the boat would go through to the nether just like this. Uh, it doesn't, but as you can see, if we just nudge it. What? Okay, so that must actually be a change then. Uh, I'm actually embarrassed I haven't tested that. You don't actually need any entities in the boat, which uh, is actually good because in my last video I mentioned zombie pigmen spawning, and they actually won't be an issue because if they collide with the boat, they'll immediately go into it. So I was going to suggest leaving one of the entities, only putting one entity in it, so that way you can pick up one zombie pigmen and then you just have to check and kill them every so often. This is actually even better, which lets you grab two pigmen before they become an issue. So anyway. Uh, since the boat won't go to the overworld, what you can do is build up a little enclosure around here, uh, which is just to make sure that no guests or anything can see you while you're in there. Uh, if you do this out of glass, that's fine because guests can't even see through glass. Uh, and then on this side, we can do the redstone. So how this redstone works is we need a pressure plate which goes into a dust and a repeater. Which is going into this piston an observer. So when we step on it, it'll push up into this lamp with a block here, going into two repeaters, then another block, and a dispenser. And we'll also have a dispenser here. And we'll just have another block here, and an observer there which will power this dispenser. Uh, this observer, the one with the observer, is the one you want to put your lava in. It has to be lava in the nether. And this one you want to put your flint and steels in. So we just have some storage here or something. And then we can fill this up with flint and steel. And 
hopefully more than one. Okay. So this is actually everything you need in the nether. And um, one thing I noticed is you can still push the boat if you're in, uh, if you don't put a mob in it. So it's probably still a good idea to put a mob in it. Uh, we can cover up also some of this with glass or another block so gas won't see you. There and on this side, we just need that and that. So let's get a boat. And any mob that won't attack you will work. So for example, you can get piglin, or zombified piglin there. This will work fine. And now you can see I can't push the boat. So this is the nether side done. If we walk on this, these are droppers. Make sure you use dispensers. We go on this. We'll do that. And uh, this is why you need buttons and stuff. Otherwise, it'll just turn all your stuff will turn everything you have in the overworld into portals. So I had four glass here exposed and that's why that portal spawned. So now let's work on the wither cage. Now you want to go to the side which has your entrance and we'll build our storage from there. So go two down from this and put a hopper line going that direction which should be uh, the middle of it will be right over this portal and then we can put six hoppers on either side which will be enough to collect everything from inside the storage and then we can also put four more hoppers in this location and we leave the others blank because we want a soul sand there actually and this is going to hold in the wither because they'll be standing here, kind of in between these two blocks and floating up in a bubble stream. So now I've got the hopper collection in and we can work on the wither cage itself. So four more blocks of a soul sand this direction. Make that a square. And then take blocks and go up one all around it except for the middle two here because the iron golem is going to be poking his head out through there. Instead what we'll do uh, here is have the cobblestone generators over that. Um, what you can do on these two sides, uh, the edges, we won't have a cobblestone generator so we can pillar up nine more blocks here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that, there we go. And then we also want to get our cobblestone generators in. So this is nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then this block is where the pistons will be. No, that's not correct. This block is what the pistons will push, and this is where the piston will be. So we'll get this all set up in place up here. That, and we want to generate a block here, so we'll put... Uh, iron is just any temporary block, so probably stone. Uh, because it'll be replaced with cobblestone as the generator runs. And then down here, you'll want to put a block there. For our water. So. We can get this all in place. Uh, 
need a block there, and a stair. Here. And just repeat that shape on all the other sides. So now we end up with something like this, and we want to fill in water in all the stairs. And we also want to put lava on these gold blocks. But first, put glass so it doesn't fall anywhere. And then we can just put in our lava. Like this. Metal farm cobble and all of their spaces. And next we can get regular pistons. Uh, it's important that these are regular pistons. Actually, it might not be too important. Just place those in like this. And if you're in Skyblock or something, you could technically use less than eight lava sources. Uh, it's convenient to do it with two if you just put one there and there. It's enough. No, it's not. You need it here and here. Uh, and you could do it with you even just one uh, if you're more clever about it. But let's get eight. And just taking all the pistons. And then we can build the clock. So block there and block there. And a block here. And you'll want a lever on this block. with uh, dust on top of it and a piston there, block, and then you'll want another piston here, and then this block has a repeater on it, this is powered and lets the power through, and then we have two blocks like that. Now what we can do is put a repeater, five repeaters like this which is the clock on repeater here, which just acts as starting the circuit. This needs to be on four ticks. This is dust. And we have an observer here into another sticky piston. And so this should now work. We just put that like that. Notice that it creates or it sends the circuit out here. But what we also need is dust on all of these. So those two gold blocks and the, all the pistons. Now it'll create a clock. But this clock is actually too fast. It's actually even too fast for this piston. What you need is 15 uh, ticks in total. So one here. This should be on 1, and then these doesn't really matter. 4, 8, 12, 13, 14, 15. And now if we turn this on, it'll actually create a clock. And you can see it's pushing down cobblestone. So with the cobblestone generator done, we can turn it off for a second to get the iron golem in place. So take some blocks down like this, and use two by two, and then we can get trapdoors. And chains we'll need. That. Those will keep them in place, and then we'll put the chains here. So these need to be on the outside. And just create that shape. And this will trap them in. Now we can put a couple extra temporary ones up there and some other chains just to make sure that he's aligned when we push him in. 
And now we can spawn a golem in. So. Just put one here and then push him in. And if you have these trapdoors and extra chains, it shouldn't be hard. Then we can break all those. And this guy is now where we want him. Next up, uh, turn the generator on again. So that it's just one block here. And the withers can see him, but the skulls will hit the blocks up here. Now we can get some glass and block this up and nope. First we should work on the rest of the cage, so I'm gonna take out this portal. And take out whichever side you'll fall into as well. You can do that now. And put soul sand on the corners. And then we can get glass in, and it'll be easier to see what's happening. So build this up. You want to go up to the top of the one below this, and then you can kind of do a staircase down, which should get you to the height of these obsidian blocks here at the end. So this 2x3 here will actually be, here, let me use a different block, those three blocks will be broken when the portal spawns in, so we'll leave them empty, and then we can bring everything else here up as well, just surround it in glass. And when we make the roof, we'll just bring it over like this. But we want to leave that open now because there's still some work to be done, uh, specifically summoning the wither. Uh, also put two obsidian here. And this obsidian is going to actually hold the wither in place because basically what he's doing is he's flying up against this uh, against this lantern and he won't be able to pathfind towards the golem. He won't be able to reach the golem. And then we want fences, walls, either one should work, but I've tested fences here and so now we can actually simulate the weather better. He's like, oh, he's too fat. Uh, he's basically pressed up, like, pressed up against this. Uh, yeah, like this. Okay, so now the wither cage is basically done. We want to add in some more signs, actually. Uh, we just need three. This is future me. Uh, just put only two signs. If you have three and the snow golem is not there for whatever reason, then you'll spawn here and the wither might attack you. So. He probably still shouldn't attack you, but you still don't want to spawn here. And you're in other parts of the farm. One here, one here, and one here. And what these do is stop water from interfering with the player when they fall down. But otherwise we're good, and we can actually add in water. And also get some cobble walls and put them there and there. Now let's get water. And if you're in survival, the easiest way to do this is with ice. So I'll show that off. So if we just place in four ice up like this. Also make sure that the golem area in here is spawn proof, so we get some buttons. And place them in. Oh, I guess we can't because it's trapdoors, but get some glowstone and put it in there I guess. Anyway, uh, ice we want to go four up like so and you need one ice here and one ice here 
So now in survival, just get yourself your unbreakable efficiency pickaxe, and you can sneak it along the top and break the ice all the way down. And there, that's all of the water we need, uh, which actually is enough for us to summon the wither, so we can do that now. So um, what you're going to need to summon the wither is six stone cutters, a few signs, eight soul sand, and six skulls, and then two buckets of water, and some empty buckets. So this is enough. So I'm going to go into survival to summon the withers. Now all you need is to place your stone cutters in at this level. And it has to be stone cutters. They're one pixel taller than a slab, which is just the perfect height. And get your soul sand in like that. I think you actually need to block this so there's no water and you can break them. The water won't flow back. And now you can put in your skulls. And uh, you can do one at a time or both at the same time. I'll do both at the same time. Just put them in, waterlog those, and then you need to find somewhere to hide. So I'll just come over here. And then this is why it's important to place blocks here. I got the two glass in my inventory in preparation and then I didn't do it, so put those two blocks there. Alright, we're ready to summon the withers in again. Uh, if you're actually in survival, it's a lot harder to summon the withers in, so don't mess up like I did. Uh, and, make, and make sure you have these blocks here. So put in the skulls, summon both, water log the lanterns and hide back here. Now you'll notice they're not being pushed around and they'll stay where they spawn. Wonderful. Uh, probably have a better spot to retreat to than there, but you'll notice that even with dying from the blast, the withers are in place. And I'm gonna go and properly saw on them, I guess, because I imagine that's not very reassuring to watch. Alright, uh, we'll summon the main again. Uh, just got a little platform here I can retreat to actually this time. So, that's right, you gotta um, I use this iron to stop the water. There. Water like those two. They'll be pushed around, but not away from where they need to be. And then we can just hide back here. And they uh, will instantly see the golem. Uh, yeah. Nothing is destroyed from the explosion as long as they're waterlogged properly. Uh, and then what you need these signs for afterwards is to get rid of this water because you don't want it. And then we can delete the stone cutters and the signs. Um, and we can just basically go around here in survival. As long as you don't get hit by a skull, the withers don't care. If you do get hit by a skull, uh, it's not good, but it's probably not the end of the world. Now we can actually do the damaging system, so I just cleaned up the area a little bit. I want to go the lantern, one, two down, and add in a dispenser, and same over here. And then we can come to the outside and put hoppers all along like this. 
Um, and I believe it is there, and then there, 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 there. So this is the kind of shape you'll have. And then we, to actually power the dispensers, what we'll do is we'll break this glass, and on this side as well, put a solid block above the dispenser. Like that. Then you can just place the glass on the side. Or actually, we'll need a composter there later. You do need a dropper here and a dropper here, however, to actually power the repeater. Then what we can do is get the actual signal to destroy the or to shoot the snowball from there, and then we'll just put that into this. Which will go power it. And then we can get some composters to place over all the other hoppers. Except for those two where we'll have a chest. Alright, so we can test this if we put snowballs in this. Here and over here. And then we Come inside. There's not really a way inside. Uh, so you'll have to. In survival, it's probably not even worth testing this. Um, or you should test it, but what you should do is find a different way to power that piston. Place that. Uh, you need to make sure that the two blocks that these are on are solid blocks, uh, the ones that go downwards. Place that observer in there. Now it'll actually shoot the withers. So come in here. You want this to be down uh, before the portal spawns, but it should automatically do that by breaking the block. And there you can see we get the uh, desired effect. Um, the withers aren't perfectly in this block as you can tell, but they will always be hit by the snowballs and also uh, you don't have to worry about being in survival in here as long as you're not the one throwing a snowball at the wither. He doesn't care. Now since we've got the withers in place, let's put in the roof. So here we'll go basically just bringing over all these lines that we've already created. And from here, uh, I would advise you to use solid blocks, uh, just because sometimes tick warping this, uh, he would shoot a skull quite high, and just in case you get a skull shot up high, it won't hit anything important. Um, then we can put buttons along like this, and. Actually, you should also, uh, as you can see from the light levels, this is actually all lit from the lava, so you don't actually have to use end rods. However, we do need end rods on these composters, so we just put one right there, and right there, oh, that's not needed. And uh, since you'll have a chest here, I would put an end rod there. And we can actually put that chest in as well. Stick it there, and this will evenly distribute the snowballs between both sides. So you can fill this up with snowballs now. Now, we just have a few other things to work on. Uh, I believe you could actually test this currently. Um, but first, let's add in just an 
couple of things here. We want pistons, which will just let us collect a few more items uh, that pop off and land on the edge. Then here we can close this up and stick a hopper minecart in. So how we'll do that is we'll place a block there or here breaks as well. And then a wall on top of that. We'll have a hopper minecart here. So stick glass going up like that, like that. Take this out now temporarily though, and we'll get a hopper minecart. Just push it in there. That's good. Oh, except I'm a fool. This should be a hopper. So put a hopper there. And do a dropper dropper. And then you want to do what I just should, did. So there, there, and it should be in place now. And if you test it out by falling down or by flying up here, uh, it'll just be pushed into that corner, but it should pick up any items that fall down here. And this basically gets us to 100% item collection. Uh, you won't actually collect obsidian that falls under there. You would have to put in another hopper minecart or something, but I think that's not really a problem. And now this dropper, we need to just uh, put a clock here. So put a clock, server, server, sticky piston, and Comparator, and that's enough that any obsidian that falls in there uh, will get sent up. Yeah. And you probably have some junk in there that fell in while you were building it. Uh, now what we want to do is actually add a sorter to sort out any snowballs and send them back up into this chest. We can build the sorter just one block away from here, so we need to point that away. Uh, just put a hopper here and below. It's basically your simple sorter. Um, the droppers are going to be right on the edge of this chest, so we want to build up a tower and you have your own way to sort them out or whatever. I mean, this is really super simple, so I'm just showing you one way to do it. But first, the sorter is going to be just your blocks like this. And then we'll put snowballs in the first slot. And we need some filter items. Um, if you are doing this for real, get yourself uh, some item and then rename it in an anvil. I'm in creative, so it doesn't really matter that much. I'm just going to use some random item. OK, that's the sorter done. Now, when you work on your torch tower, or your elevate, item elevator, make sure that your hopper is snaking like this. Uh, I had it slightly wrong before anyway. Let's go down here to the redstone. So it's going to be comparator into a dust like that. And now we can place it all in. This should be on subtract to make it a clock. And put yourself some torches and put this on three. And then if there are already items in it, you might want to clear it. 
So there's just snow in there. Let me put that in now. Uh, there'll be a couple stuck in the uh, dispensers, but the droppers, but you should get everything you put in there. Back up to the top during regular running it. Uh, and one chest of snowballs isn't enough, but it's much less than you needed in the last iteration. I think you need like five double chests of snowballs. This should be almost enough to fill it up. Now here you can see this end rod. You're going to need one there and one there. And you don't need end rods on redstone. So that should, and the buttons will block it there. You might want an end rod here for light though. Nope, that's bright enough. So this is basically the farm working. Now, let me just think to make sure if there's anything I'm forgetting. Uh, of course, we've got to put in the snowman. So to do that, you're going to come here, break this, and bring this out a little bit. You want yourself a wall there and a minecart. And then just put track there. I showed this in the other video, so it shouldn't be too surprising how to do it. Um, nice thing is that they can't see the withers out here. So just spawn your guys, push them in, and get another glass here to push in. So. Piston and a button. And there's one of them in place. The other one on the other side is the same process. And then you just need to come in and break the wall somehow. Uh, just like break this block. Or if you can get yourself in the middle somehow, that's the best way. All right, now as long as uh, you're not inside the cage and get into this block, if you stand on this soul sand, you can push the snowman out of place and he'll stop generating snow. But otherwise, the snowmen, you don't need to worry about them anymore. And I believe I said in my last video that you can put these snowmen in before or after the withers are summoned. Uh, I think it has to be after. Let's some end rods. I think this is too dark down here. Yeah, just put one there and then you need an end rod here, one there. And then finally you might want a storage system for your obsidian. So just come out this, a couple more blocks. Or where's the entrance? It's right here. Hmm. I suppose you probably want to modify this a little bit. So you can get out. Just come through like this. And then Example, I think what I might do here is bring the hoppers over like this. Uh, but at this point, you can just decide what you want. Get some chests.
Actually, the sorter will interfere with these chests, so I'll just take them out. There you go. Uh, one thing you want to make sure is your platform out here that you're standing on. Make sure that it's buttoned up properly so that portals won't spawn on it. Um, just do something like this. Really, you need significantly less buttons, like just those in the corners would be enough as well, but I suppose you need those too. Anyway, that gets, and you need end rods up in your storage, or just like blocks. But end rods produce light, so it's nice. So this should be working now, I believe. So I'll test it and we'll find out. And let's just put in some extra guardrails there. Uh, and I need to make sure, of course, that this is either in the spawn chunks or another player's loading it. So this should be in the spawn chunks. I'll just make sure. Sometimes you need to step off and onto the pressure plate the first time you run it. Okay, uh, I forgot to make this safe, so we'll just go back into creative. Yep, four blocks in a row right there. Place those. And we'll stick an end red on top. Anything else up here? There and there, I suppose. Although I think it wouldn't spawn in a waterlogged block. And probably one right there. Because uh, I think these four repeaters in that block might be considered a valid location. All right, everything else should be good, so we'll try it again. And the really nice thing about this design without the boats is that the floor here is all flooded, so there's no real danger that the portal spawns in front of the withers, which is uh, the worst. The only way that can really happen is if you put four signs here, uh, then those signs will be considered valid. Uh, thankfully this snow prevents this plus the three signs from being considered as location. Although you really only need one of those signs anyway. Um, and I believe this is good. No way. And I just had myself a scare with the portal spawning not where I expected it to. It spawned one block further this way, um, which got rid of a little bit of redstone and some other stuff. But what I suspect is that um, the wall has been changed into, or the wall has changed its shape on the other side. Otherwise, I'm rebuilding the farm, but uh, okay, yeah, it was correct. So, you see how the wall here is kind of this sh shape, which I think was added in 1.17, or no, 1.14 maybe. Um, place the glass there to make sure it's like that, and that will put one pixel of extra space there. And with that one pixel, I think our position will be slightly different, and we'll appear in the correct location.
Okay, yeah, it was correct. So that that's what's going on here. And uh, since I already had the portal here, it didn't update itself. So that's going to need to pulse that. That is not how you pulse server. Okay, now everything should be good. Um, so definitely make sure that your wall on the other side is correct before going through. But with that said, we now have a working reactor. So let's cover this with glass too, actually. Um, like that. And there. I don't think a portal can spawn anywhere here, no. So we're good. And there you have it, a working obsidian reactor. And all the items should be coming in here. Yes, we've picked up some. I'm not sure how much. You can probably watch the footage for that. Probably all of it. But if we fill our inventory completely, then the collection should basically be 100%. So we should have gotten 12 more obsidian. Which we did. And another thing is, just to double check, you want at least one snowball in this chest because otherwise um, if one of these hoppers is not full one of them will take priority or if both of these aren't full one of them will take priority and steal basically from the other one so just as long as this has a few items in it it's fine so now it has two and what we'll see is that it has two again after shooting two, just because we get them back from the withers every time. And this is actually more reliable than the uh, other design that I showed a few weeks ago. The collection is, like, unless you have an obsidian on this block here, as I said, uh, everything will be picked up. So yeah, there is your obsidian reactor complete.